So, um, as with the ears and the sake of, for the sake of time, uh, I'm giving you eyeballs because there's only so much time in the semester. Um, when you open up the file, this is what you will see. If you go into the 3D view and hit Shift Z, you will see them rendered, and this is what they will look like. Um, so I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over the construction of it, the material nodes, um, how to modify the textures, and then how to bring it into your own file um, and get it situated. So uh, let's take a look. Uh, so the eyes, whoops are composed of two different pieces. There's the outer sphere, and there's an inner sphere. The outer sphere is the cornea. If you go to side view, you can see that it does bulge out a little bit in the front, um, which if you actually look at any eye references uh, on the Google, right here. You will see a similar thing, similar shape. So um, that's why it's like that because that's more or less how it physically is. So that's the cornea, um, and then if I hide that, then we've got the eyeball, which is the eye, the white, and then the iris uh, and the pupil are all part of the same mesh, and it's concave. Uh, the outer shell, the, the cornea, does not have any seams in it for UV unwrap because it's all done procedurally. It's basically just clear and shiny. Uh, and then the inner does have one seam. Uh, the image texture is only applied to the front of the eyeball. The back of the eyeball is not textured. Actually, if I go into textured view, you can see the back isn't really textured. Um, and that's because you're never going to see it. But I kept it there. I didn't delete the faces. Because when it's actually in the head, you can select the whole thing and double tap R. Whoa. If you hit comma to rotate around the selection. Um, double tap R, and it'll do kind of free rotate. And then it'll rotate better and actually stay in place. Whereas if you delete the back half, it won't rotate as true. So that's why I kept the back. Um, but it's real simple geometry. You know, it's just a sphere that was extruded and scaled, and then a couple of extra holding edge loops to keep the edge uh, here tight. Um, yeah, so that's a ge that's the geometry. Uh, towards the end, we'll actually separate the eyeball, so there'll be the left and the right as separate objects, um, because right now with the mirror modifier set up on them, if I rotate one from front view, you can see that. They, they don't look in the same direction. They'll either be cross-eyed or opposite of cross-eyed, whatever. So um, when, when we're ready to actually have them looking in a normal way, we'll separate them, and then we'll parent them. We'll do a, a, a track to, uh, what's it called, a track to? Yeah, I believe it's a, a, a track to constraint. So it will look at, we'll create an empty that will be our look target. So wherever the empty moves, the eyes will independently follow uh, that target. And it makes for um, moving the eyes around uh, to be pretty easy. All right, so that's, that's the actual physical setup. And now for the textures, um, let me split the view and open up my UV image editor. Uh, first, this is what the UVs look like. So I unwrapped the, the eyeball. The, if I maximize this real quick, uh, this is the front half of the eyeball. And this is the back half. I just scaled it way down because it doesn't really matter what happens to it. Um, but this is just the front half. You can see the three edges. This indicates where the actual iris is right here. And then if I bring in um, my I underscore color, you can see the color map that is laid on top of it. Um, so that's the color. And then there's also there's a bump map. 
and I will actually show you how these are made in Photoshop uh, as well. Uh, and then there's also a mask. Oops, where am I going? There we go. An eye mask. Uh, and this is for the eyeball itself actually has two separate materials applied to it. One material for the iris and then one material for the white. <coughs> Excuse me. And you'll see that uh, here in a second. Uh, but first, what I want to do is I'm going to jump into Photoshop and not look at that right now. I'm going to open up wherever I downloaded that to, character creation, textures, and itexture.psd. Alright, so this is a uh, 1024 by 1024 texture. Uh, what I did in Blender, oops, that, not that Blender, this Blender, um, is once you unwrap the UVs, Sorry, I'm confusing everybody watching this right now. Once you unwrap the UVs, if you go to UVs and export UV layout, you will get something that looks like this. Okay, so you've got that, and then um, I also painted the eye mask in in Blender. It was just going to texture paint and, and creating a white brush and just making that circling the, the white part of the UV. I made the brush this, the same size as this circle right here and then made it white. Um, so you bring those into Photoshop and you get something that looks like this. Give the eye white a slightly off-white yellowish type color. Then I brought in uh, this iris iris texture. Um, how do you hide the mask? I don't know Photoshop that well. Huh? Ah, thank you. Okay, so this is what the eye mask or eye image looked like. Uh, this is a duplication to hide some overlap of the eyelashes that I didn't want in the actual iris texture. Um, but this was the image that I brought in. Um, I copied some sections and pasted them in others to get rid of what little reflections that there were. Uh, in general, just like when you're doing the texture painting of the face, you don't want any light reflections baked into the texture. That way, you know, whatever lights you have actually in the scene will reflect, but you won't have any reflections of lights that don't actually exist. So you don't want to see any uh, specular highlights of lights in the eyes um, in your texture. So uh, I brought that in, I sized it up, I had to warp it a little bit to get it to fit in a perfectly circular manner. Uh, I added the mask to it. Whoops, 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 whoops. Okay. Uh, and then what I did is I brought it back into uh, Blender. And we went in, I went into texture paint mode and set the slot to paint onto the iris um, and then set my brush up to be kind of a desaturated darkish kind of red and I did a few different passes just right on the actual geometry uh, if we go into just solid view you can see and then bring the radius way, da way down and add in veins that way. Also did some larger passes just to get some shading. Um, and then image and save as image and I saved it as I underscore color. It's important that you save it once you're done painting otherwise this image will go away and you won't have the progress saved. So if you do any texture painting or any manipulation of textures in Blender, you have to save it out as the image. Just saving the blend file will not actually save the image. Um, so once I had that done, uh, then I opened it back up in Photoshop and I created my bump map. And the way that I created that was to take my color, let me turn off the UVs, I took the color uh, duplicated it and did a filter high pass and then I also desaturated it 
So adjustments, saturation. I just did the simple set desaturation. I know there are three or four different ways you can desaturate images in Photoshop, but the simple desaturation worked just fine. Um, so what we get here for bump map is we get 50% gray for most of it, which 50% gray in Blender will not add bump either way. Um, white will raise it up and black will push it back, I believe. Or it's the other way around. No, I think that's right. Um, I mean, it'll be pretty obvious and it's easy enough to reverse it. But um, that's how I added, created the bump map that looked like this. Um, I did, you see I've got two, two layers here, uh, and that's because I needed to invert the veins so the veins were lighter because I wanted those to raise up. Um, so then I created the bump map and saved that out, and that's how I saved out both textures. So we've got the color and we've got the bump. Um, that's the texture creation. Now for the uh, materials. Going to collapse that, go back into object mode, expand this out. Actually, I'm going to go into edit mode, set my viewport to textured, turn my top to the node editor, and you can see uh, for my iris texture, so let me maximize this. Uh, I lied, let's do this. And we don't need to see that. And if I go to my materials and preview, you can kind of see it there. All right, so this is the iris and eyeball texture. I've got uh, two image inputs. I've got the top one here. If I bring that out, or actually, I've got three because I've got this one here. So I've got my color image. It's going into a diffuse node that's going right into the surface. Actually, that's not, I think actually this is slightly more complicated than it needs to be. Uh, let me, let me play around with this real quick. So that and then what out. Yeah, actually, we can get rid of this. This, this, and this. It, it adds a slight bit more realism, but let's not worry about that right now. This is really all you need um, to keep it simple. So we've got our color map. It's going into a diffuse shader node. So Shift A, shader, diffuse. And that's going into the surface output. And then the uh, bump map okay, is being multiplied just to reduce the intensity. Because if I bring this out and just increase the size of my preview right here and put this multiply value at 1, you can see that it's way too bumpy. So that's why I brought it down to 0.01. Um, so it lessens the effect, um, and to add that multiply, it's just add converter math, change it to multiply. The bump map goes into the first value, and then the other value is whatever you need it to be, and that goes into the d displacement. So that's the iris uh, shader. Now if I go to the cornea, uh, the cornea, again, I've got some extra nodes here because I was playing around with things, but none of this was working. So really, the cornea is just a glass shader with a roughness set to 0 0.005 and an index of refraction set to 1.38. That is a specific number. Um, there is actually a wiki list. Let's see if I can find it. OK. So if you Google wiki index of refraction, the first result right here will give you uh, a ton of values somewhere. I know it's in there. Somewhere. Maybe it's not there. Um, 
typical values. I mean, you can see some of them here. Uh, okay, here we go. List of refractive indices. So we've got uh, all these different indices of refraction. What that refers to is how much does light bend when it enters a different material. Uh, perhaps your most common point of reference is if you're in the pool and you look underneath the water and it looks like your legs are bent and short and weird, that's the light refracting when it enters the water. Okay, so every different material has a different value. Air is basically one. Uh, ice is 1.3. Uh, you can see right here, human cornea is 1.373 or 1.38 or 1.401. So pull one of those values, and that's how you get a more realistic uh, cornea distortion. Uh, and then I just have a very slight bit of roughness just to kind of break up the edge a little bit. Um, so yeah, we don't really need any of these. You can just get rid of those because they're not doing anything. Oh, whoa. I accidentally deleted the output <laughs> output material there. Okay. That's all you really need is the glass and the material out output. All right, so that's how the eye is constructed. Um, this scene uh, consists of the eyes, a camera, and there's a sun lamp just to give it some light. Um, if I go to actual camera view and you can see we've got some specular highlights going on in the eyeball. You can see some of the depth and some of the color. Uh, and then when you actually put it inside of a head, this is what you get. And again, this is the exact same eye um, as the other blend file. I, I pulled these directly from um, this file. So as long as you have enough light, you can see uh, you get some really nice looking results. So that's the construction. Um, let's cover how to actually bring them in. So, if I, I'm going to open up, let's see, you guys are probably, I'll do this one, textures class. Nope, blend file. All right. So you're somewhere around this point. If I just go to layer one. All right, so you've got these placeholder eye, eyes in here for now. Now, I did make the, the new eyes the same size, so once you get in the position, they should be pretty close. You might have to move a couple verts around right around the edge of the eyelid just to make sure that there aren't any gaps, but it should be pretty minimal. Uh, so to bring them in, uh, I'm going to center my 3D cursor. I'm not entirely sure that matters, but uh, it helps just to keep it clean. All right, so uh, then I'm going to go to File, Append. I'm going to navigate to the Eye Blend file, go to Object and Eyes. Pen from library. All right, and it just popped them right into place um, rather conveniently. So I can select, go to my wireframe and my temporary eyes. I'm just going to move those to layer 20. All right, and now if I hit Shift Z, oh, I got to turn on some lights so you can see. Um, Oh, actually, uh, while I think of it, as this renders, you can see that we're getting these kind of cracks and lines happening on the face. And it took me a very long time to figure out what was going on. And it's just because I'm in orthographic view. That's the only thing that's causing this weird, cracked, um, rather frustrating appearance of these textures, which I, now that I look, you can't really see on the projector. Um, but it's just caused by being in orthographic view. So if you hit 5 on the number pad, and go into uh, perspective view, you won't have those lines. Uh, and then this particular lighting setup doesn't have enough light to really see the, the cornea or the, the iris at all. So if I select this lamp and I'm just going to boost it up to 500 and zoom in more, you can kind of see it. Uh, but again, this scene wasn't really set up for proper lighting, which incidentally is the next thing that we're going to do. Um, but that'll get it in place. And if you need to, you can always select the eye. Oops, zoom out. Select the eye 
and just select the outside shell and hide it and then go into textured view and just make sure that everything showed up the way that it's supposed to and it did okay go back to solid view unhide the eyeball and then this is where we want to make sure that we don't have any gaps with the new geometry so I'm just gonna zoom in real close and kind of orbit around the eye and see I got a little bit of a gap right here so I'm going to whoops, just kind of move this in got proportional editing selected I'm just gonna move that in and just kind of make sure there's no more gaps you shouldn't have to make too many changes but there will be a couple of gaps here and there that you'll need to adjust uh, and that's how uh, you add the eyes